Welcome to the Red Sneaker Writers Podcast. News, interviews, and writing tips for people who are serious about having a writing career and want some practical knowledge to help them achieve it. Your host is the nationally best-selling author of more than 50 books, William Bernhardt. Hello, Red Sneaker Writers. This is episode 51, going out on August 10, 2020. Let me remind you that WriterCon, our annual writers' conference, is coming up soon, Labor Day weekend, September 4 through 6. The conference physically takes place in Oklahoma City, but this year we're making it possible for you to stream the entire three-day conference. Every session, more than 60 of them, you can watch it as it happens without leaving home over your computer or other device connected to the internet. And as if that wasn't enough, here's another plus we've just added. Every one of those sessions will be not only streamed, but recorded and made available online to registered guests So you, for two weeks after the conference. So you could theoretically watch every one of those 60 plus sessions. I mean, this is an unprecedented educational opportunity to get the knowledge you need to achieve your writing dreams. Okay, I'm a little prejudiced. It's my conference. But still, I don't think there's ever been anything like this before. And we're not charging anything more for the streamers than we are for the people who show up in person. I understand some people are reluctant to travel right now. That's fine. Watch it from the safety of your home and get every bit of the benefit and perhaps more. If you want to learn more about the conference and see if it's right for you, please visit writercon.org. That's W-R-I-T-E-R-C-O-N dot O-R-G. My interview this time around is with the renowned Nathan Bransford, one of the biggest names in the world of publishing and writing. He's a triple threat Actually, that may be kind of an undercounting of his threats, but what I was thinking is he's a former literary agency with Curtis Brown, a major literary agency. He is a writer himself, having written several books, including the very successful middle grade series with Jacob Wunderbar as the series character. And he also works as a writing coach and advisor, mentoring other authors, helping them achieve their writer's dreams, just like we try to do with WriterCom. I'm going to talk to him in this interview about what advice he can give writers to help them along on their journeys. But first, the news. I thought this might be a good time to recap what's going on in the book publishing and sales world with regard to actual book sales. You'll recall that when the lockdown began, we saw an immediate decrease in book sales, at least in part because the bookstores were closed and people weren't going out. But what we've seen now is overall an increase in sales, especially with regard to ebooks. It is clear at this point that many readers who were perhaps before the lockdown reluctant to try ebooks, they preferred paper books, they liked to hold the book in their hand and the feel and the smell and all that kind of thing. But when there were few opportunities, because the bookstores were closed and the libraries were closed, they have discovered ebooks and apparently discovered that they like them because the sales are significantly up. Those small presses and self publishers who are good at marketing their ebooks ended up doing very well during the time of this lockdown. Overall sales up by more than 4% as opposed to the previous year. What's not entirely clear is how the traditional publishers are doing, the big five and other major traditional publishers. You recall we've talked in previous podcasts about how they have worked hard to suppress their ebook sales, often pricing the ebook more expensive than the hardcover. They may be paying the price now because if ebooks are where the action is, 
and, and people are able to find books that are far less expensive, that look just about as good, that may hurt them. And in fact, there are indications that it's hurting them already. Which is not to say traditional publishers aren't selling any books. They are. But it tends to be very much the front list. Mary Trump's new book sold more than a million copies in its first week. John Bolton's book did very well. Pre-orders for Bob Woodward's book are great. Now, whether this extends any books that aren't about President Trump, <laughs> that's unclear. There are a few hits. Suzanne Collins' new, new book and, and Where the Crawdads Sang continue to sell. But overall, it looks like this has been a tough time for the traditional publishers. And if decreasing sales weren't enough, they've got another problem with regard to print books because they may have to find new printers and they may be hard to find. Again, I mentioned before the bankruptcy of LSC, which is the largest printer of books and other things in the U.S., Later on this month, their assets are going to be auctioned off, and there is no clear indication whether the new owners are going to want to assume or even honor their previous contracts. They may not even be interested in book publishing, which would lead all those people who are all those publishers who are dependent upon paper scrambling to find new publishers. Remember, that Ingram does have its own print-on-demand service, Lightning Source, and that's where publishers went a lot during this lockdown when they needed smaller and faster print runs, but Ingram can't do everything. This could seriously impact print books in the future. Let me tell you about some new possible opportunities out there for red sneaker writers. Crooked Lane Books has opened up a new imprint that they call Alcove Press. It's going to specialize in uh, book club fiction, exploring family, friendship, and communities. Its first titles are going to come out this fall. Bonnier Books UK is launching a new music imprint not publishing sheet music as such, but publishing memoirs, social his histories, other music-related narratives from writers and musicians. Arcadia is rolling out a new imprint for children. It's had its Haunted America series for adults for some time, and now they're going to do a similar imprint for middle-grade readers for Arcadia Children's Book. There's also a new digital publisher you may want to know of. They're called Neo Text, and I've posted about them on my Red Sneaker Writers Facebook page, which, if you're not a member, why aren't you? Go sign up, hear about this stuff when it happens. Anyway, Neo Text is going to publish works, uh, a lot of science fiction, it looks like, and crime novels, what they call noir novellas, not novels, novellas, short work. Some journalism, some nonfiction, but focusing on the short or shorter than full length novels, pricing them at two ninety nine I know often I talk to people at my retreats and whatnot who really prefer writing short fiction and Once upon a time, there was a huge market, particularly in science fiction and mystery worlds for short fiction, not so much anymore. So if that's what you're writing or want to write, you might take a look at Neotex. They're just getting started. This is not an endorsement. I'm just giving you the information. And along those lines, let me finish up by telling you about a new software program designed for writers called Dranthika. Dranthika. G-R-A-N-T-H-I-K-A. This was actually developed by an Indian writer, Vikram Chandra, who has written very sophisticated, complex, serious fiction, and says he had trouble sometimes keeping track of all the various plots and subplots, all the details regarding the characters and whatnot, which I completely get. How many times have I gone back thinking, okay, what's Shauna's nephew's name? I think that was in the second book. <laughs> or what color Daniel Pike's eyes? I don't know. So he has designed this software, which he's now making available. You can 
rent or lease the use of it for $100 a year or pay a, I think, $10 monthly fee. The idea is that as you write, you can go through and label things descriptive or plot related so that you can pull them up quickly when you need to remember what this character looks like or what their background is or what they do. There are also some timeline functions that allow you perhaps to get your plot straight and a lot of other functions as well. While I suspect it is not essential, if you're the kind of person who likes tech and likes new gizmos and sometimes stuff like this actually helps people get writing don't do it if it's going to be a time waste and keep you from writing but if it might draw you in and get you more energized about your book you might go take a look at this again i haven't done it not an endorsement but if you've already got scrivener and you've figured that out and you're looking for something new grantica might be what you're looking for I have to thank my son, Ralph, for tipping me off to this next story that forms the basis of this writing tips section. He told me about John Boyne, who is best known as the author of a 2006 book pertaining to the Holocaust called The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, often assigned reading in middle schools and high schools. Well, he's written a a new book called A Traveler at the Gates of Wisdom, which he calls an epic tale of humanity, which tells various stories of families stretching from, quote, Palestine at the dawn of the first millennium and journeying across 50 countries to a life amongst the stars in the third, end quote. Well, what's relevant here? In one of these stories set in ancient times, Boyne describes one of the character's formulas or techniques for dyeing a dress. Wanted to make the dress red. And the recipe that the book gives involves ingredients like, see if any of these ring a bell to you, the leaves of the silent princess plant. Hylian shrooms, <laughs> Octorork eyeball. Ringing any bells? Well, if it doesn't, it's because none of these things are real. But if it does, it's probably because you've played The Legend of Zelda, specifically the 2017 Nintendo game called The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, where the protagonist of the game, Link, can create recipes from monster body parts and herbs, which is what these are. Apparently, the author wanted to know a recipe for dyeing things and went online and Googled this recipe and put it in his book, not realizing it isn't real. None of these things are real. Of course, he got called out on Reddit for incorporating fantasy elements in his novel. To his credit, online on those bulletin boards, he didn't try and hide it. He did his uh, uh, Maya culpa. I did it. I didn't research well enough. And he says he's not going to change it. He'll own his mistake. It works. Whatever. So (laughs) you got to admire his attitude although perhaps not his research skills, which is bringing us to the point of this writing tip segment. Do your research, writers, when necessary. Don't lazy out on it. It is what your novel's credibility and your credibility, your reliability with writers, rest upon. It is all too easy to just go Googling stuff these days or find the wiki page. And a lot of the time that'll be accurate if lacking the depth that might actually make your book better, might make it a richer experience for readers. Readers, especially when they're reading novels, which are, you know, fictitious, but they love the feeling that they're also learning as they're being entertained, that they're gaining something out of it. Tell them something real that they didn't know, and their eyelids may widen. They'll get additional pleasure out of the book. But, of course, that means your research has to 